The Iraqi uranium, which was secretly shipped to Canada, is on its way from Montreal to refineries in Port Hope and Blind River, Ontario. Saskatoon-based Cameco purchased a reported 550 tons of uranium in a cloak-and-dagger deal engineered by the U.S. military. The stockpile is considered the last major remnant of Saddam Hussein's nuclear program, but a Cameco spokesman downplayed the origins of the so-called yellow cake. To do this deal and it's really a routine type of purchase with a very non-routine type of origin. The yellow cake will be converted into nuclear fuel at the Ontario refineries. Some of that fuel will likely end up at the Bruce Power nuclear facility near Kincardine that is partially owned by Cameco. The purchase has been slammed by environmentalists who have security and safety concerns. Gordon Edwards is president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility. So what are your thoughts on this? Hello, Kate. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Well, I think that it's, uh, it's an odd situation where the, Cana the Canadian government or the Canadian corporation Cameco receives a shipment that was supervised in top secrecy by the American uh, authorities. And it makes you think that perhaps they're worried about something. They're worried perhaps about some kind of an attack on the shipment. And if that's the case, then I think maybe Canadians should be worried about that also. Because such attacks might not only happen on the high seas, but they could also happen uh, here in Canada. But if it's yellow cake, it's, it's not weapons usable at that point. So, so why would they be that worried about it? Uh, the only reason they would be that worried about it is because we do have an insurgency in Iraq. We do have al-Qaeda. Uh, and they may see this transference of uranium as a kind of a symbolic gesture against uh, what they conceive of as the Arab interests. Uh, in that case, they could, uh, sim they, they could attack the shipments or the storage here in Montreal just as a symbol. Uh, because you're right, these, this is not weapons usable material, but it is uh, in a very light powdered form, and it's like a radioactive heavy mm -hmm. metal. Imagine 550 tons of mercury uh, being on the docks of Montreal. You can understand why people would be concerned about that. Well, uh, uranium is in the same kind of category, except that it's in the form of a fine powder which would be easily blown in the air and dispersed into the water. Okay, but 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 uh, let me play the, the devil's advocate to some point here. I, I suppose that we commonly transport this material around the world. That, that's correct, and uh, commonly we don't use this kind of secrecy that has been used for this shipment. So. The Americans must know something and they must be concerned about something and perhaps we in Canada should also be concerned about that simply because of the origin it gives it a kind of a symbolic importance that it would not otherwise have. There's also something else that should be uh, mm -hmm. stated and that is that according to a spokesman of Cameco at Blind River, uh, this material may not be used for Canadian reactors but may be going overseas to Britain. Now if that's the case, Britain of course has nuclear weapons. So here we are taking uranium from a country that doesn't have nuclear weapons. And granted, although the uranium is intended for nuclear power reactors, it's true. Nevertheless, Canada would never sell uranium to a country that was in danger of developing nuclear weapons. So the question is, how come we're willing to sell it to a country that has nuclear weapons? That could also be seen as a sticking point or a danger point. So what do you really think is going on? Uh, I think it's just really a case of Cameco making a, a, a a, a good transaction for them because they're buying this uranium cheaply and it makes you also wonder who is actually being cheated here because uranium as you know is very high priced right now there was a bidding process and Cameco got this uh, got a very good deal they won't divulge exactly how much money was spent but one has to ask the question who is getting that money and is this really a fair transaction I, is it really doing well by the Iraqi people who uh, have that uranium right now and uh, or previously had it in their possession do you feel confident that now that the, that the shipment has gone where it's going so far, three, three quarters of the way through the transaction, are, are you feeling confident that everything's going safely? Well, so far it has been going safely and it shouldn't be, uh, it sh unless there was some accident that was untoward, uh, it should be okay to transport the material. Mm -hmm. But there's also a problem here and that is that in Port Hope, they have a, a facility which is called the uranium hexafluoride plant. Right. And that plant has been shut down for more than a year because of radioactive contamination of the soil. And there's no indication that it's going to be able to be started up anytime soon. So the question is, how are they going to process this 550 tons of uh, yellow cake? 
They may only be able to partially process it. Many people in the Port Hope area are saying that that uranium hexafluoride plant mm -hmm. should not reopen because the contamination under the plant has already shown itself to be moving towards the Lake Ontario in two separate streams. So um, with this kind of contamination under the plant, uh, starting up the plant would not perhaps be well advised. Hmm, interesting. All right, so lots of questions are still remaining to be answered about what's really going on with this yellow cake. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us about it. You're welcome. It.